So, wow. So yeah, oh, I took a shower, so I'm just like, my hair's all crazy. So the thing you're gonna have to realize is that electricity, electricity, such as a very piezoelectric virus that's highly influential. Yes, the turning up of the Wi-Fi. Any type of high energetic force will activate somebody's lymphatic system. Okay? Energy begets energy. And all the different viruses. Now, what are these viruses? I mean, what, what's a virus, right? Virus is just a... Um, it's an entity that needs to, that has programming that needs to be in a protein and that programming has a very specific function. But how does that virus get programmed? Like who does it? Well, actually, we actually, humans, program viruses. And viruses don't necessarily have to be programmed in a lab. You actually program viruses yourself by how you use your body that is housed by programming, different types of programming. And so it had dawned on me about the Hegelian dialectic, you know, the problem, reaction, solution. You know, we're, we're in the solution phase. Who's solution? You know, it's, you know, everybody has their own perceived solution to whatever said problem. And so, the solutions out there, which are so vast, are actually what caused the problem, but also caused the reaction. And the solution that you think is for you is also aligned with the system in this great simulation of decline. And so I watched that movie that just came out um, through bit shoot about some about the water and snake venom and all that shit. I'm just like, oh God, another rabbit hole. Someone's gonna go down. And that's exactly what the InfoWars and all those different pundits in the conspiracy world, they're all about manufacturing stories and doing the whole correlation equals causation. And then knowing how you actually program the viruses by your own immune system and then also what you feed your mind then that also is infectious. Obviously, when things go viral, whether it's a rumor or something wonderful, that's a programmed virus. Someone put out an idea and it took off. How people characterize it, it's totally irrelevant. The fact that there's energy surrounding that idea is what makes something viral. It's infectious and it jumps from person to person or from uh, computer to computer or from somebody's, you know, taking information and then going and repeating the information and also adding in their own spin. That's just like your DNA adding in its own spin to that virus. That's why things are so aggressive out there because electricity brings up things that were kind of asleep that weren't highly triggered, you know? And so we had a relatively, mm, peaceful, I guess, pop, you know, population prior to the COVID and then so many things kicked off around 2019 and 2020 and then, oh my God, everyone went haywire. But, but that's the thing is that, so then I realized that, okay, so the solution, people's solutions, like their kidney detoxes, like their psychedelics for their brain, doing all the drugs in their youth, okay? When people experiment in their youth and doing all the different drugs and then they're also taking over the counter prescription drugs. Oh God, getting all the different detoxes and um, supplements, prescription drugs, over the counter drugs. And so the body builds a resistance against that. It builds a defense system against things that are attacking its way of life. And People's release processes are not, I mean, they're okay in the beginning, so they're relatively balanced. They're able to take in information and release it, and so they're able to go to their job and do stuff, and maybe they get nipped and tucked by the medical system and also get all the different prescription drugs and surgeries. And so it keeps them alive for, alive for a certain amount of time. But then why does the body break down, and why do some people suffer liver cirrhosis or liver cancer? Why do people suffer pancreatic cancer? Why do people suffer brain cancer? Why do people suffer so many different cancers? Then you realize 
that all the different um, antibiotics that were used for specific organs of the body, and it could be a liver detox found in your holistic health food store. It could be something that you made yourself because you thought that you were being, you know, Mr. Chemist or Mr. Chemical, Chemist, whatever, or you were using um, the prescription drugs that were targeting your specific organs. Some people use cannabis and that is the overall brain frying. And so then down the road, dementia is going to be huge because the amount of cannabis users that are out there. And so then you realize all the solutions were actually what caused the problem. And so, and so, but then that's also the solution for the industry. So then I'm thinking like, holy crap, we're in a major simulation, <laughs> major simulation where you are, where you are with every word that you speak with every chemical, chemical, um, concoction you put together with every word that you write down. You are developing your current reality as well as your future reality for not only you, but also for your children, of course. And so then I'm like, oh my God, you know, what What if the Freemasons, you know, were the name Freemason, they could even develop religion like Christianity. You think, you know, when you look at linearly, okay, when I'm looking at the timeline from like 6,000 years ago, right? When Jesus, like, you know, either before Christ or after Christ or when Christ was born and all that stuff. You're like, oh, well, first the Jews, and then it came the Christians, and then it came, you know, then the Muslims were also happening around the same time, and also, you know, the, the, um, the, the, the Confucius or the Chinese and all the different dynasties. But you're thinking like, oh, you know, Christianity came first, and then, and then with through the Crusades, then all the Freemasons came, the Knights of the Templar and all that stuff. So there's a whole story fabricated around the whole religion and there's a linear timeline that someone develops like amazing script writers that develop this and then also develop something like the Bible and I'm telling you if somebody can be that advanced in developing a storyline 6,000 years ago or 6,000 generations ago okay because I'm not saying that people live in a year but you know generations of, of people die and reproduce every single year, every single day. So let's just kind of, you know, uh, bring it to something that, that, that that's palatable. So 6,000 generations ago, someone is just as advanced today writing a script was just as advanced 6,000 years ago writing a script, whether it's William Shakespeare, the Bible, or any other type of story, Epic of Gilgamesh, the, the Iliad and the Odyssey, um, all the Greek pantheons, the Sumerian pantheon. And so creativity isn't, is timeless. People's imaginations, and I'm not saying imagine is like, it's like, it's fake. No, imagination is, is, is if you understand the chemical chemistry and the physical chemical properties and the physical properties of things, and you understand how to create words and sound and also develop strengths and weaknesses and all that stuff, then Sky's the fucking limit. You could even change the like terraforming, geoengineering is changing the main well not changing the mainframe, but changing the simulation. Okay, we said we had a you know a ninth planet, you know, no we don't. Now it's not there anymore, or whatever. I mean anything can be added or taken away at any moment in time. And then when something something is added or taken away, then all the different scripts and the storylines that are around that then change and be like, wow, science has never settled. Oh, well, we thought it was this, but now it's this. Oh, you know, we were mistaken or who knows how they're gonna justify why things change. But, but that's the thing right now is we're in a major, major simulation. And there are so many storylines attached to simulation. And then you see storylines get developed today. That video or that, yeah, that video on BitChute from about something about the water is another storyline. But let me tell you this, there is actual physics behind why people die from specific organ cancer disease and chronic illness. It's the amount of antibiotics you used when you, when you were a kid, when your parents gave you a bunch of antibiotics to stop the pain, when you partook or partaken in the antibiotics or participated in the antibiotics field of the holistic allopathic using energy, radiation, chemotherapy, oh, Tylenol everything and so then when 
the energy is turned up because of a new influential virus that woke up people's immune systems and they had incubating macrophages and macrophages. It was basically infection incubating with all of those different solutions which are the antibiotics laced with all the food and the food supply laced with everything in your environment because what are you going to use? It's not like you're taking an antibiotic, taking it from some other atmosphere, right? And you're bringing it in here. No, you're taking antibiotics is using bee pollen. Antibiotics is using soy proteins, isoflavones. Antibiotics is using nut proteins. Antibiotics is using even different proteins from the liver, even different proteins from different parts of the body. Because they're targeting that. When, when you're taking a liver detox, there's some component in that specific antibiotic that, that, that is targeting the liver. That's cleansing the liver. That's cleansing your kidneys. Cleansing, okay. You're basically attacking it with an antibiotic and the body is building defenses against those specific detoxes and antibiotics and supplements and whatever else. And then you are releasing it into the atmosphere and then you just programmed another virus. You just programmed another fucking virus. That's what's fucking crazy. And so you, when you know how prolific the holistic and allopathic world is, and people around you are doing the cannabis, they're doing all the detoxers, they're doing all the supplements, the rendemsvir or whatever, the ivermectins, all those different drugs that are antibiotic, and they're taking it and they're going, you know, through their little whatever, you know, they go, oh, this is so great. And then they're, and their body has built a defense against it. And those are antibodies that are microphages and macrophages, basically another virus. They spit it out there. Somebody breathes it in. Now they're taking on somebody else's programming against that, you know, specific drug and also laced with your DNA. Whatever, however you spun that information no different than when some takes my information and spins it and adds their own little shit to it and the same thing i do i take other people's information i do my own little spin and so that's how things go viral and things get created that are new and and different because somebody's adding their own dna their own idea their own energy their own spin to it and so that's how things evolve and also just get destroyed too people can die from evolution and people can live from evolution it's just a matter of how you use that information and how your body releases it and it spins it to its own specific thing. And so we're constantly, and this is so amazing, we're constantly not only spinning stories and what you see what their journalists do and all the different bloggers do, and myself as well, but people are spinning these viruses. They're spinning the DNA in these viruses, spinning the story in these viruses, and so these viruses become more exotic, more aggressive, and then you add in energy on top of that. Yeah, you add in the Wi-Fi. Okay, big deal, whatever. But you know, but you know, when there is so much energy, like what happened in 2020, in 2019, and with all the riots and everyone politically and everyone's getting all freaked out, and so not only do you have a virus that has gone viral and there's already spin to it with adding in more of their DNA, making it more unique, which means there's no other therapeutic in the world that's going to stop it. I mean, come on. But then all the stories get spun. And then all the storylines get created. And that's what InfoWars is about. That's what all the conspiracy world's about. That's what all the different ancient aliens and all the ancient bullshit and the Galactic Federation and all the... And then you're just like, oh, this is the Tower of Babel. It's the amount of storylines on top of storylines on top of story. And I'm telling you, if you don't peel back the base layer of where you of the first storyline that was created and given to you, let me tell you, there are probably a thousand more on top of that that you haven't even realized. Getting down to the base storyline, where you're now finally not reacting to anyone when you think well you can react, but you're not like now now you realize that that that's all a storyline that if you want. If you want a specific, uh, if you have a specific and purpose in life and you have a specific and you know biochemically how shit works and physically how shit works, then you'll develop your own storyline. You will develop not only your, so your own storyline, but then you will also show people that they don't have to die in the simulation. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to pass away in the simulation because not only the storylines, but the amount of antibiotics they have used in their past. The amount of drugs they have participated in in the 1950s, 1960s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s. And that's all going to come to surface. And then this is where people's organ failure. This is why they have so much mucus. Like yesterday, I had to take a nap yesterday. And I, I actually made my own 
my own like little pasta stuff, but it, this was just, just the shells of, of the, of the pot stickers. And I added my, you know, meat and something else to it. And I just passed out. I know when I'm craving like pasta that I'm going through another simulation of releasing something. I took something on that was incubating. Now I'm releasing it. And boy, my dog felt it too. And she's fine. But, uh, but yeah, and then I woke up from my nap just choking on my own mucus. Like seriously, I was choking on my own mucus. I felt like, like I woke myself up choking on my own mucus. It was so built up in my night, my nasal cavity and so built up in my, th I was like, I was hacking it all out. It was insane. And this can happen at any point in time. That's why you have to have a very strong first and second lines of defense, because if your first and second lines of defense are so weak and stuff gets into your body, imagine what it's doing to your organs, what it's doing to everything in your body. And so, so yeah, now you're gonna have to realize that, which I'm realizing that the amount of storylines that are being developed as we speak and the amount of ones that are also being taken on and people think, oh, they discover something new because of all the rabbit holes. No, honey, you are so distracted. Oh my God. And so then here it's Jilly Juice and another fucking storyline for like, and I, and they know that I'm, I'm one of many storylines out there. And so I'm really going to have very little influence when you think about, when I look at Luke Radowski's page, bless his heart. I know he's trying his best, but he's part of the whole thing. But, um, when I look at how many likes and shares and how many people are following him and all of his stuff, you realize that you, you, I'm up against, I mean, I'm taking on, yeah, the medical holistic system, but not, not only that, I'm taking on all the, all the activists and they're lost in their rabbit holes there. And so then you know that, that you just develop, I'm developing the storyline and it's, it's an amazing simulation that is, can be realized, but it's not without, you know, its own little, you know, pitfalls of, of having to don't change your lifestyle and belief system. And then, and then releasing all the, all the different, uh, layers of programming and that right there is not an easy feat. And so what did I write about, you know, their whole religion stuff? I mean, when I said there are no absolutes, well, yeah, there's that. But the thing about the Freemasons, I need to say this, the Freemasons developed your religion. They developed all the religions. They, they developed all the religions, even probably even the, the beginning of mankind. But who are these Freemasons and how do they... Who the hell knows where anyone came from? Who the hell? We don't even know where the hell shit came, comes from. And does it even matter? You can all speculate that it happened, you know, the Big Bang, panspermia. I mean, I played around with those different theories. But you can't prove it. And there's no way you can go back to the beginning of time to even say that it's this. So it's all speculative anyways. And you can acknowledge it and say, well, these are the theories. And like, yeah, evolution is a theory. So is creationism. You know, just because someone made, just because Geppetto made Pinocchio doesn't mean that Pinocchio is going to go and, and worship Geppetto. Because even parents make huge mistakes and the kids are like, screw you. I don't want to deal with your bullshit. I'm going to go and keep myself alive while you're trying to destroy yourself. So we think a kid wanted to want to worship a parent? No. So why would we want to worship our creators, whoever they are? You know, worship yourself. Keep yourself alive. Write your own simulation. You were given life. You were given a simulation. And so I, I can't knock that there is a specific platform people have missed come from so they understand the world they live in. And then if they want to change it, they can go and change it. But first, you have to understand the world that you live in. If you don't understand the world that you live in, then you'll be always adopting somebody else's narrative. Understand the world that you live in and then develop your own simulation. And maybe it will be then in in conjunction with the main simulation out there. But you know, the main simulation out there is trying to balance out the life. There are people that are going to choose to pass away and choose to, to do whatever. And, and other people are going to be like, Oh my God, I don't have to pass away in this simulation. I can stay alive and watch the simulation change as it changes. And, blah, blah, blah. and so then, then I'm thinking like, God damn, you know, what the hell am I going to, Oh, here we go. I'm writing a new simulation. And that even the, the word doctor, it can still remain the same. You can still be educated, but the education can change. The education be like, well, we're not going to use um, organ transplants. We're not going to use antibiotics anymore. We're now going to use just salt and water and food. And while you're trying to transition from the old world, 
we're now going to help you transition by not applying antibiotics that will help you deal with, you know, advising you on how you want to go about bringing in the salt water and dealing with releasing the stuff and, 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 and saying that you're going to be fine, stay home. Um, I mean, the whole medical system can completely change from a, from a, an, an entropy type of system to a negentropy type of system that understands that, yes, dying and reproduction can happen at the micro level, which is called, you know, lengthening your telomeres and evolving and adapting. But then the medical system can also be the ones to bring in the life and then teach the parents how to keep not only themselves alive for indefinitely, but also their child. And so the medical system could be like a birthing center with specific parents who are trained to understand how to do this. And then the system looks for the diversions out there that are using the antibiotics, that are using all the anti-inflammatories, that are using all the ionic, heavily ionic stuff. And they're not balancing and they're not taking the time off to go and rest and, and regenerate. Who are, who are not feeding themselves, who are playing a, a part in an image. And so that's the world that I want to live in is where the medical system isn't part of the morgue isn't contributing to the hospice or palliative care. So even the word doctor can still mean the same doc have the same name, but the the meaning behind doctor is changed. Or you don't call them doctors anymore. You call them life supporters. Hell I don't fucking know. But that's the thing is that's why names change. You know, from Burma to Myanmar. And you know and, and so and so then, and then the meanings of the meanings applied to the names change. And then you realize that, wow, you've been fed such a long story, such a long story with so many different. So that's why yesterday I, I just was like, fuck, this is, and this is just, I can't write my book from a very narrow perspective. Like 6,000 years ago, we had six, gen, six civilizations. They were the Mesopotamia. They were this. I mean, that's just another story too. And we had Jesus Christ, and we had the Romans, and we had the Greek pantheon, and we had the Sumerian pantheon, and we had this, and we had these gods, and we had the Indians, or the Hindus, and the Shivas, and then we have Mohammed, and we have Jehovah, and we have, and then, you know, you, then you see all, oh God, it, it, it's endless. It is freaking endless. And you have the Mormons, and whatever his name is, and I mean, oh my God, it is endless. And so I can't be stuck to any specific storyline. I can't even come from that. I'm going to have to say that, yeah, you know, uh, I, I got to figure out how to say this. And so that's why, you know, I never picked a religion. That's why I couldn't stop where I was at even three or four months ago. Because there was so much. You couldn't just stay compartmentalized and like, oh, okay, well, here, this is what this means, what this means. Now I'm going to stay right here. No, there's so much fucking more because it needs to be developed. Okay, so I said he Hegelian dialectic problem, reaction, solution. Right now we're in a solution phase and reaction to a problem. Solutions are based upon a very specific simulated solution that even though you think it's your solution, it's, uh, it is if you think you should die someday. And I got it. So there are no absolutes because even the mean of a doctor is going to change in the future. Like I said, all right. Um, what else did I write here? I watched that video about freaking venom in the water or some shit. And it's all a bunch of bullshit. It's stupid. And, you know, when you look at the different giants of the past, yeah. <laughs> People want to worship giants. It's like, it's like taking someone who's like nine foot tall or, or, or a basketball player and worshiping a basketball player. That's why all these sports stars come about. That's why all these different celebrities come about. They're all nipped and tucked and, and, and programmed and, and crisper gene edited. And then they look different than most people. And people are like, oh my God, that's so amazing. They start worshiping. Oh, the worship is insane. That's where religion comes from. That's where politics come from. That's where scientific dogmas come from. Science is just another story. It's taking all the elements in the world and all the physics and the chemical properties and calling it something and then having a purpose to it and then applying a meaning to the energy and how you react to the energy. And there you go. Now you have a specific simulation that has to be reinforced by positive religion, science and academia and history and science and social studies and, and math and English. And yes, even numbers is a logic. It's still a, a, a storyline. 
I mean, it's 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 one that 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 builds. Yes, I mean, you you have in this world right now. We have to start from scratch, right? What you know, you you have conception. But I mean, could at some point a person doesn't have to go through childhood to be an adult? Could they clone somebody and clone an adult where the adult is actually is an adult? And to, well, I'm sure there is if if there is specific energy and chemistry put together, you can take some and make an exact clone. But right now we have to do everything from the cell and that's where the numbers come from and the multiplication division. And so you have to learn, you have to learn the, the, the logic and the reasoning of this society and all the formulas and the math and the physics and all that stuff. And then realize that all that can change. That could five become five without becoming one and then two, then three, then four, then five? Absolutely. But you have to have the physics to support that and this and the whatever devices to support that that is stable enough. Will someone invent that? Oh, I'm sure in the in the future, if not now, already it hasn't happened, or it has happened. Who knows? Anything is possible. Remember, the universe is only as broad as your imagination is as, as, as your your ability to develop new neural pathways and when the world is small and you're in the universe is small it's because a person's at a deficit and they're atrophying that's why so then you're like well what's the universe is it fake no it's not fake when you look out you see the sky we have a collective conscious out there that keeps things in place keeps the narrative in place so then this is the thing with the john oaks and the whole flat earth you can have a flat earth, absolutely. You can develop the perception of flat round of anything you want. But see, when you get lost in the two, the two binary arguments of flat versus round, then you're stuck between those two. Well, earth could be a fucking triangle. Earth could be a fucking this and fucking that. But then you'd have to have the physics to then go aligned with then, you know, the whole rotation, all this and that. I mean, that's the thing is, is that you got to have some kind of logic and order as far as a simulation. And when you transition from one simulation to another simulation, the formulas and the physics and the chemistry and the science and the numbers and the stories all must align or else you get chaos. And so the whole thing with the JJ meta mentality is that it still abides by the physics laws. It still uses what we currently have. And it's just expounding on it. It's not going completely way out there and say, okay, Earth's a triangle, and now go and try to figure out how to prove that and then develop a whole storyline and even the, the formulas attached to it. No. That's like reinventing the wheel. Why do that? That's just stupid. Because if you can keep yourself alive through salt water and food and fluctuating with all the different people spewing out all of their programmed uh, storylines, their genetic storylines, because it's attacking you, then you can develop any kind of freaking storyline you want. Earth doesn't have to be flat, doesn't have to be round, doesn't even have to be a triangle. It could be a freaking straight fucking line. Okay? I mean, that, that's the thing, is that anything is possible. And that's why there's no absolutes. There's no absolutes. And then you're like, well, what the hell? And so when someone hears this, you're going to be like, oh my God, this goes against everything I ever... And that's, yeah, because you have a specific order and a logic in your world. And I completely get that. So I don't want to completely upset the homeostasis. It's enough saying that you can live indefinitely and you don't have to die from cancer disease and chronic illness. And the reason why you do die from cancer disease and chronic illness with specific organs that are being targeted is because of your practices or you took on somebody else's DNA that was taken all the different remedies and antibiotics and that metastasized and then it attacked, it attacked that specific organ. You'll never know whatever you picked up along the way or whatever your lifestyle is, but both, both your lifestyle predispositions and what you pick up along the way in your journey through life is the reason why you die. And you'll never know where you picked up that virus, that specific macrophage and microphage, whether it's from your doing or from somebody else's doing that you picked up, it doesn't even matter at this point, can you release that programming? Can you redevelop and develop your own programming? And that's the crux of it. And, oh God. So you know that most people out there are not gonna live. They will be taken down notch by notch by notch. And you can't stop it, there's no way, you can't, you can't there's no way. 
The amount of deficits that are out there and the amount of pain to pull themselves out of the fucking grave is going to be so enormous that they're going to take part in the, in the, in the antibiotics. Rest in peace, a little bit will be rest in peace, a big bit. So that's what I'm dealing with is trying to figure out how am I going to write this without coming from a fucking narrow point of view. And so I'm like, oh, well, we live in a simulation. Well, okay, well, that's not, I'm going to say that. But I can't even mention, oh, humans are like 2 billion years old and humans are 120 million years old and, 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 and we had six civilizations, six thousand. Oh, fuck that. I mean, I'll reference it as, as a storyline, but it ain't something that's going to be like, you know, uh, even the whole Adam and Eve and all that other shit. No, I'm not even, nah. -uh. I'll reference allegory for context so you can kind of get from your filters because we know we have theologians out there we know we have people who are major major right wing left wing whatever and they come from a specific belief system and lifestyle and i still have to reference it so they fucking get it it's like footnotes and so if you know your audience is like all about the galactic federation and and, and they're from this planet and that planet. And you have somebody else that's like all about the Bible. And somebody else is all about Black Lives Matter or, you know, Trump or Biden or whatever. And you know, everybody's coming from a very specific place. You got to speak to that listening. You got to speak to that audience. And you have to bring in different quotes or different footnotes so they can get it in their world. That, that That's like, you know, metaphorical similes, met, 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 you know, meta something. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. And so, uh, you know, uh, metaphors and similes. I knew I had to say, I knew this, this two words. So I got to use metaphors, similes, examples, and I have to bring in everyone that I have to, that's why I have to know all the stories out there. Cause I have to know who it is I'm bringing in. I can't just go and target only the Christians. I can't only just target and bring in only the Black Lives Matter. I can't only target and bring in only the Asian population or the gay population or the straight population. I got to speak to everybody. And you realize how enormous that is? Well, it's not that bad. It's not that horrible because you can take one thing from every single one of those belief systems and be like, dude, there you go. Here's another storyline. Whether it's a, it's a, it's a tall tale, fairy tale that was based in a simulation that happened, you know, maybe, you know, several generations ago, or it's, it's, it's a, it's a, I don't know, it's, it's a genetic storyline. It's someone messed with your DNA and they want to do this, this, and this. And first there's a, a specific storyline of binary in, 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 in the old world of the nuclear family. And now we're going to non-binary. And so the storyline's changing. And so I understand, you know, every storyline is pertinent. So that's what all the chaos is, is all the different genetic storylines and all the different religions and politics, political storylines and scientific storylines. And then you're like, and that is when you think about it, the Tower of Babel. And I'm speaking from the biblical side because there's a biblical audience that I have as well. And that's how, that's how you're able to reach so many different people is when you understand other arguments, other religions, other everything. And that's how the New World Order knows this shit because they developed it and they go and, 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 and program someone to be a leader in that area. So yeah, there's a lot of controlled opposition, a lot of control, control, controlled opposition. And, and it go and, and, and it's a huge campaign. The think tanks out there, academia, and even getting someone all riled up and, and finding someone that's like, that's in college. That's very, that that's, that's highly easily manipulated because they're young. And you shape their mind and you shape the way they think. And then, then you're like, here, here, here's an idea. Go and take off with it. <laughs> Let's groom you for then this specific, you know, like back in the 1960s, all the different Swamis and the Hare Krishnas and, and all the, the different cult leaders like Jim Jones. And, and, and those were probably all CIA, MK Ultra. Oh my God. Yeah. All the, the different, you know, the communes and the off gridders. I mean, that all is very, is from a think tank. They wanted to see how easy it is to manipulate massive amounts of people. And they, oh boy, they, they got to see it. They, there's the evidence and it happens today. And so that's why I, I don't have any influences except for myself. And then I watch things I want to watch to then confirm, oh shit. Yeah. Another fucking storyline, another fucking religion, another freaking swami another freaking cult leader 
It's great. Now they think I'm a cult leader. Uh, 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 no, sorry, honey. I don't want anyone worshiping. I don't want anybody think doing, you know, I want you to be your own fucking God. I want you to, to, to drive your own reality. And it's different for everybody because the amount of layers of programming and your lifestyle and your belief system and how much you have to shed your blood types. Oh my God. All your influences, all of your associations. I can't compete with your family and friends. I can't compete with your associations. I can't compete with your academic background, major layers of programming. There's no fucking way. So fine. But I'm going to have science. And what is science? Uh, antibiotic, probiotic, and then the salt, and then all the microbiome, and all the different constituents of the food supply, and the mucus, and the viruses are just programming, and everybody programs viruses based upon how they want to spin it from their DNA, as well as what they say, and then you realize that, that, that yeah, we are, this kickoff in 2019, 2020, as far as the Georgia Guidestones, the system knew, the architects and the engineers of what's going on, of this simulation know exactly what they were doing. And so I'm constantly fighting off the fucking attacks, the microbial attacks. Whatever. So is my dog. I just keep feeding the energy and getting smarter and smarter. <sighs> so I gotta just think more. Alright, bye.